This week, the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump is wrapping up. The trial resumed today with closing arguments. Late last week, the Republican-controlled Senate chose not to call witnesses or admit any new evidence. At this point, it seems the Senate is poised to acquit the president. One of the most moderate Republican voices in the chamber announced that she will not vote to convict the president. Even so, Senator Lisa Murkowski criticized President Trump tonight. The president's behavior was shameful and wrong. His personal interests do not take precedence over those of this great nation. Murkowski also blamed the House for rushing its impeachment inquiry and said she doesn't believe the trial has been fair. A vote on whether to convict or acquit the president is set for Wednesday. Let's take a look at some top stories tonight. Two women killed and a child injured in a shooting today at Texas A&M Commerce in North Texas. That shooting happened inside a co-ed freshman residence hall. Police have not identified the suspected shooter, but they did say there does not appear to be any other threats at this time. Classes at that university won't resume until Thursday. Texas and some other Republican led states are asking the U.S. Supreme Court to leave the Affordable Care Act alone for now. The states asked the court to return an ACA case to a district judge for further proceedings. The filing argued that it would be premature for the court to weigh in since the law will remain in place while the appeals process plays out. Last December, a federal appeals court held that the law's individual mandate is unconstitutional but did not invalidate the entire law. Supporters of the ACA want the court to take up this dispute. The CDC has released some new preliminary information about the current flu season. The agency estimates that between October and the end of January, there were between 19 and 26 million flu-related illnesses in the U.S and up to 25,000 deaths. The CDC says this is just preliminary data and there may be even more cases. Whether it's changing your car's oil or deciding whether to rent or buy a house, we all need life advice sometimes. That's why we created our adulting hack series. And tonight we're talking about tipping. RJ Marquez breaks down the proper etiquette depending on the situation. We all know tipping can be confusing at times, so we did a little bit of digging to find out how much you need to dig in your pocket. Here's what we got. When it comes to restaurants, Bankrate.com suggests tipping the wait staff 15 to 20 percent, which is pretty normal. So what about takeout? The site says no tip is necessary when you pick up your own food. But if you get some service like a waiter delivering the food to your car, then it's suggested you tip one or two bucks or up to 10 percent. And one that always confuses me, leaving tips at fast food places or quick service counters. Bankrate.com says you do not have to leave a tip if you don't want to, but how could you not leave a tip when you get something delicious like this? I'll go ahead and leave that there. And also, they sing for you here at Cold Stone. Another website, realsimple.com, says for bartenders, the standard is $1 per drink. So what about hotels and travel? Before you head on a trip, you're advised to tip airport curbside service $1 to $2 for every bag. Same goes for shuttle drivers or limo drivers. Uber and Lyft give you the option to tip, and it's always recommended that you do just that. Another key tip for traveling outside the country, try to tip in that country's currency. If you're going on a cruise, cruise ships usually tell you ahead of time what their tipping policy is. At the hotel, the bellhop carrying your luggage usually gets two to three dollars per bag. Same thing with towels or toiletries, two dollars per delivery, and housekeeping two dollars per day at a budget hotel and three to five at a luxury hotel. And Bankrate says it should be a daily tip because the cleaning staffs might change from one day to the next. A concierge should be tipped anywhere from five to twenty-five dollars based on how hard it was to get something for a guest, like tickets to maybe a sold out show. Bottom line, customers are expected to tip at places where service workers are paid only minimum wage or commissions. Adulting Hacks is one of several series that we feature every single week here on the News at 9. Tune in tomorrow for a brand new installment in our consumer series we call Money, It's Personal.